by that altar under Brother Young. And that very morning, uh, when God took the taste of alcohol out of my mouth, he did it right then. Yep. I didn't wait no two weeks or three weeks or a month for having to weed off of it. It was gone, and that was some... Let's see, it was in 92, January of 92, so you know about how long it's been. Yeah. Like 20, Eight, 28, 29 years. Man, when God does it, he does it. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. He's a good God. He's faithful to his people. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Y'all be praying because I've been... Uh, when I get through with Ephesians, uh, God has laid revelations on my heart. <laughs> and I read through it, I done read through it twice in the last, I guess, month. And uh, God has shown me some stuff in there. So y'all pray for me because that if I if I make it through Ephesians, we may not. God may Put me there next week. I don't know. But y'all do pray because I have been seeking the Lord on revelations and I, uh, it's, it's, it's deep stuff, but it's good stuff. Brother Gerald had, we had a Sunday school series on it a while back, didn't we, Brother Gerald? Yes. Uh, but it's, uh, it's good. It's good. All right. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. I'm gonna read on through. I'm gonna read all the way through, uh, probably verse 13. And then I'm gonna come back and break down. I'm gonna read a lot out of this commentary I got. It it, it breaks down this chapter really really well, and uh, I want to read some stuff out of it to y'all tonight. Won't, won't keep you too long, maybe. All right, Ephesians chapter two, verse one. And you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You know that was all of us one time wasn't it? Yes. Wherein in times past you walked according the course of this world, according to the to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit now that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The devil doesn't stop. He's still working. Among whom also we have all had our conversations in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Thank God for his mercy, though, right? Yes. yes. God us out all of that. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, and we all were, weren't we? have quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Yes. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. And that, of course, what Jesus did on the cross made it all available to us. For by grace, no other way. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. Faith. That not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. There ain't nothing we can do to earn it. It's already been done already been finished not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them wherefore remember that you being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are uncircumcised by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. 
that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope. Hmm. You know, there is no hope without Jesus Christ. There is no hope. Hmm. And without God in the world. But now, but now, in Christ Jesus, you have ye who sometimes were afar off or made nigh. What does nigh mean? Close to. By the blood of Christ. Soon to happen. Nigh. All right. Let's go back to verse 1. We're going to... I'm going to go through it pretty quick, but there is some stuff I, I want to read. Uh, quick, of course, he, when he quick talks about quick in here, he's made us alive. through the, our, the, who were, the, the We were dead in our trespass sin. He has made us alive through Christ Jesus. Uh, you walked means you live. In verse, uh, verse number two, we used to live before we got saved we lived in the air the, the the areas of the world the things that's going on in this world and we know a lot of that a lot of bad things is going on in this world uh the word the word course signifies all the tendencies thoughts pursuits deeds that characterize the present period of history this world cosmos means world system. The world system is not for Christ. The world is it's just not. That is, that is those philosophies, values, and lifestyles are opposed to God and hostile towards him. The world system is hostile toward God. We see it every day. Yeah. All, you got, all you got to do is turn your TV on. It don't matter about what you turn it on. It, it shows an opposition to God. And the prince of power, we know who the prince of power of the air don't we? Yes. The devil and Satan himself. Um, but, you know, the good thing is, he's, his doom day's coming. <laughs> he's, when, just when he thinks he's got it all, his doom day's coming. All right, down in verse 3, <laughs> Uh, we all had con our conversation means we all conducted ourselves. The conversation here is conduct. It's not necessarily your your uh, your voices. Now, I think Peter brought out a lot of that in chapter in in First Peter that uh, your conversation is how you are. It's not necessarily what you say, but how you live and how you act is your conversation, and that's people sees that a whole lot more. Then they hear what you say. They see how you live. And they see if you walk what you're talking about. If you walk the walk, you know, if you talk the talk and walk the walk, there's a lot of them can talk a big talk but can't walk the walk. Uh, who are the children of wrath? That's the ones that are destined or divine punishment. We don't want to be there, do we? We don't want to be there. If anybody wants to butt in any time, it'd be all right. Okay, any questions or comments y'all want to say? Because I am doing a lot of reading. <clears throat> uh, jumping on down to verse number four. But begins to disclose God's response to man's sin. This divine response is expressed in three main verb parts. God has quickened because they were morally dead in sin. The Lord gave them spiritual life and hath raised us up together. Thank the Lord he's raised us up together for his kingdom. God has not allowed these Christians to remain in the grave of their old life with its sinful ways and habits. That's what the cross did for us. And us accepting thereof what he did for us. He pulled us away from all that. 
God made us sit together in heavenly places. In other words, he has brought us into his presence, into an intimate relationship with him. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. All right, and verse number eight. For by grace you are saved through faith, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Now I want to read you um, two little articles, not articles, but synopsis of what he, with, with grace and faith here. <clears throat> so y'all just kind of bear with me for a few minutes. The grace of God is the expression of his goodness toward the undeserving. We're all were undeserving of his grace. Grace means, we know what great grace is, unmerited favor. It's nothing that we've earned. And can be, uh, this grace is, is the basis of our salvation. Yes. Nothing we can do to earn it. It's free. <laughs> if a price was paid for it, so really it wasn't free, but salvation for us is a free gift. We just have to accept it. Every conversion in Scripture is an example of God's grace. When Paul met the Lord on Damascus Road, Paul was a persecutor of the church, yet God made him one of the church's chief preachers. And if God can take that and make him wrote how much of this Bible? Probably what? Actually, at, least, about, at least half of it, didn't he, Brother Jerry? Back to the New Testament. I mean, that's... And he, was, he used to kill them. Kill God's people. So, mm, so what could he do with us? <laughs> what could he do with us? That's a good question. Isn't it? We do remember that we are saved, given the given the Holy Spirit, and allowed to serve God by His grace. It's all made possible by His grace. Now, our part comes in the faith part. Okay. Because it says, by, for grace, by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourself. Like I said, it is the gift of God. You know what that gift is? Christ Jesus. That's the gift that he gave to us. He gave us his son. Gave us his son. What a sacrifice. Saving faith is part of humanity's response to God in the salvation experience. It is as simple as looking to Jesus for salvation. Saving faith is both simple and complex. It is as simple as a drowning man reaching for a rope. Yet at the same time, it sets in motion all the judicial, judicial machinery of heaven in keeping with the ultimate purpose of God. While believing is simple, there are some for whom it is too simple. Some believe it is too simple and that they find, find that difficult. In the scriptures, the intensity of one's faith is not as important as its object. The object of, his, of your faith is what? Jesus Christ is the object of our faith, isn't he? But to some, they, th they think that's too simple. Salvation is too simple. But it is simple. Simple as saying yes. And that, that, we, that we accept what he did for us on Calvary's cross. Others often believe in the gospel producing an emotional response. Although because individual personality is different, it is not wise to use emotion as a test of faith. Ultimately, saving faith is expressed as an act of the will. Repentance and faith are in essence two sides of the same coin called conversion. When the Philippian jailer asked, what must I do to be saved? Paul and Silas responded, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. How simple is that? 
That's sense of salvation. Some faiths it's harder than it is, don't you? Mm -hmm. To be saved, a person must trust Christ. This last statement. To be saved, a person must trust Christ alone for his salvation. You don't you can't get it any other way. You can only come to Christ through the cross, what Jesus did for us at the cross. So I thought that was a little lengthy, but it was some I thought some good stuff there. All right, verse nine. Not by works, lest any man should boast. I'm going to look at James real quick. Go to James chapter 2. We're going to correlate this in there. James chapter 2, verse 14 through 18. What does it profit, my brethren, Though a man say he have faith and not have works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, be ye warned, and feel, notwithstanding you give him not the things which he are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. A man say, Thou have faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Works is the aftermath. I mean, works is the aftermath of faith. You can't work your way into salvation. Uh, you can do all the works you want to, but until you make that step that we talked about just a minute ago, accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, then all the works in the world is not going to help you. It's not going to save you. But on the other end of the spectrum, with that faith, you're going to want to do that stuff. If you accept him and really, <laughs> truly accept him, then you're going to want to work for him, aren't you? That's, a, that's just a that's part of salvation. That's part of faith. Is is once you once you get there, you shouldn't just go dead, so to speak. But, but like James said over there, faith without works is dead. You gotta you gotta you gotta put that some legs on that faith. You gotta put some legs on that faith and do some do some walking with it and exercise that faith that God has given you. Because somebody else out there besides me or you needs that salvation, don't they? And if we don't do nothing else but witness, that's a work. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of the main works you can do for Jesus is witness to somebody else of what he's done for you and what he can do for them. Something to think about, huh? You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a teacher. Uh, all you got to do is be saved. <laughs> Amen. All you got to do is be saved. And, and be a witness for him. He calls all of us to be his disciples once he saves. We're all his disciples. Once he once you you get the salvation experience. Alright, verse 10. We're gonna wind it up pretty quick. For we are his workmanship created. How? In Christ Jesus. Unto what? Good works. Good works. We just talked about it which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That's basically what I just said a few minutes ago. you got to put some footsteps on that faith. you got to put some footsteps on it. Anybody got any comments? Brother Rose, nothing? Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. It's impossible to please God without faith. Let me read this in here real quick. Uh, the reason in part that salvation is not achieved by good works is to prevent men from bragging of having earned a place in heaven by themselves. <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> God's not going to accept that. First place, you ain't going to make heaven. You're not going to be able to brag up there 
that good works got you up here. Because if that's how you got there, you ain't gonna make it. <laughs> I mean, that's that's cold blunt, but that's the truth. Without without him, uh, you accepting him as your savior <laughs> and humbling yourself to him with that faith, then you ain't gonna make it. I know that's cold, but it's it's the truth. Well, Doyle one writer said this, and I and I liked it. He said, "Saving works is a faith that works." <laughs> Mm -hmm. Saving faith is a faith, faith that, that works. works. Yeah. And I think that's right. That's right. right. Yeah. Mm, that's good. Right now, right now in the time we live in, we, we need to have more faith than we ever did because of the fear that they're trying to put on us. We Every time you turn around, just when things are looking, I'm, I'm, a, I'm getting off a little bit here with what you said. Well, let's just take this COVID thing for instance. People's getting vaccinated. Things are looking up. Deaths are going down. Hospitalizations are going down. And now they want to throw this other phase of it in there. Mm -hmm. And it's all fear. They want, they want you to be afraid to go out of your house. Mm -hmm. They want you to be afraid to come to church. Control. They want to control your life. Yeah. And, and that's that this is part of it. I mean, it's the world. I went read first of that chapter. The course of this world. The course of this world right now is to keep you from, keep you in uh, in fear and, and, and afraid all the time. Yeah. You're afraid to, like I said, you're afraid to <coughs> go to the grocery store. <laughs> that's, that's hypothetical, but you're afraid to go to the grocery store or something. Yeah, yes, because they just they want you to have complete control. Of your life, mm -hmm. so you don't have you don't you don't so that you don't think for yourself. They're all the time thinking for you. They said church is not essential, but a liquor store is. Mm -hmm. Church is not essential, but all those rights and stuff they have is essential. Yep. Don't make sense. <laughs> don't make sense. No, it does. Nope. A lot of stuff they do just not make sense. No, it doesn't. All right, verse ten, uh, four in that verse says. For verifies the assertion of man's good works having no part in obtaining salvation. We don't. Our only, only way we obtain salvation is surrender to him and to accept him of what he did for us. Workmanship refers not to our original or physical birth, but to our spiritual birth. What we are spiritually, what we are spiritually in the good sense of is due to God, not ourselves. Created in Christ Jesus good works means having been morally, morally recreated by Christ Jesus for good works. That is, Jesus remade our spiritual lives so that we could then do good works. The apostles thinking in this, since the Christian had been spiritual life, given spiritual life, for the purpose of doing good works, there could have been no good works by him prior to conversion that would merit salvation. That's the whole, I think the kind of the whole subject of this area in here is that we didn't do it ourselves and we can't do it ourselves. Yeah. We can't make heaven ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's only through Christ Jesus that we make heaven. Uh, that there could have been no good works by him prior to conversion that would merit salvation. God works, good works follow, do not proceed. And that's basically what he said here. That's what James said. The works don't equal faith. Faith equals the works. You're going to do the works after the faith that you exercise that faith in what Jesus did for us. I thought that was good stuff. Uh, uh, the circumcision part. Let's go with the verse seven number. Verse number twelve. That at the time, at that time, ye were without Christ. Before salvation, we were without Christ. Every one of us. We had to come the same way, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We were all unsaved. And strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope. Without Jesus Christ, we have no, like I said, very early in this 
Read it. We, without Jesus Christ, there is no hope. There's no hope of eternal life, that's for sure. All right, verse 13. Uh, wind down with verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you made, you sometimes were far off or made nigh by the blood of Christ. Because Jews had access to God through his temple in Jerusalem, they were said to be nigh. Close to, right? Ain't what nigh means? Yeah. Close to? But Gentile nations geographically removed from the temple were said to be far off. These terms of space came to denote moral distance so that to be nigh was to have a proper relationship to, with mm -hmm. God. And to be far off was to have an improper relationship with him. Ain't you glad that we're nigh and not far off? Man. <laughs> I'm so glad yeah. that I'm nigh to him. I'm not far from him. He's no further than I mean, you, you can't, I don't have to really just use a word to describe it, <laughs> Gerald. I mean, he's just there. <laughs> he's all around us. Omnipresent. He's omnipresent. <laughs> Nothing else is, om no one else is omnipresent. Isn't, isn't that something? Wow. That we serve a God like that. That's all I have tonight, Brother Gerald. Anybody else got anything, want to say anything, want to testify like, again? Or? I'd like y'all to pray for my hand. Okay. Yeah. I ain't got to have the biggest preacher in the world here because I believe God can do it. He has kept me through so much. He's a. But the devil's trying to steal my joy and, and my calling. Well, I know a God can stop it. He can stop it. He's a liar. He's, the devil is a liar. If y'all feel like. I've been, I've, been calling him, I've been calling the devil a liar this whole week because every time he tries to bring a tingle in my chest, I rebuke it and it goes away. There you go. <laughs> That's the kind of guy. Come on, brother Rose. Or you want us to come to you or you want to come up here? I'll just come set y'all. Y'all ain't got to get close if you're afraid. But I ain't afraid. I'm not afraid. God has not given me a spirit of fear. No. Nope. The word.